Welcome to Tetrionics 101. In this video I'll be giving a detailed explanation and demonstration of how to build all the subatomic fields and particles from the paper templates that are included in the Tetrionic ebooks. With these paper templates and, and models we can then accurately define and differentiate between mass energy geometries and matter topologies. At the very start, obviously we start with the Planck quantum, the quanta of energy found throughout the universe. As in detail in tetrionic theory, these quanta are simply triangles of energy. They are the foundational geometries of mass energy momenta that make up everything in the universe, including the mass, the matter, and the physics of interaction between objects of matter. You can see that they're equilateral geometries and this equilateral geometry reflects the quantized angular momentum, the omega of Planck's constant, square meters per second. So in any one second spatial coordinate system we can have any number of Planck quanta and this is expressed in Planck's law E equals N H nu. Each Planck quanta is fully Lorentz transformable and that is to say that the positive charge on one side is a negative charge on the opposite side so any change of perspective or coordinate system when you're looking at the Planck quanta results in a change of charge you can see in these two quanta here as well as the, the numerous ones in the center that the entire universe is made up of Planck quanta of either positive or negative charges. In reality the electric fields are identical as is the linear or square root vector momentum but what changes is the dipole arrangement from in the case of a positive from north-south to a negative which is south-north. It's the arrangement of the magnetic dipole that determines whether it is a plus or a positive or minus charge with respect to the measurement. Obviously in physics with the mathematics we just simply define them as plus or minus in the mathematics. But using these simple equilateral geometries and the Planck's constant h we now have a foundational building block of energy for all the physics in our universe. Using combinations of these quanta in various arrangements we can begin to build various particles and electromagnetic fields. In doing so we can describe all of the physics of our universe as it's currently modeled mathematically. And you can see here I'm just quickly arranging them. In this case into a couple charged fields. It's the symmetry or the equilateral geometry of Planck's constant itself that gives rise to electric charge. And simply as a result of equilateral geometries of mass energy momenta, these quanta can come together in various shapes but they always create an equilateral geometry of mass energy with its associated square root linear momentum. As these geometries come together, you can see in this case that we've formed a squared number. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or two squared. This pattern can obviously continue onwards and expand even further, but in each case, the geometry that's created is a squared number. Now I'll just quickly bring these around and you can see in this case the next energy level which is the third energy level first two being two squared third energy level being three squared is made up of nine one two three four five six seven eight nine or three squared quanta this applies to positive or negative charges the only difference between the two is that the equilat within the equilateral charge field that is created in both cases there will always be a 
asymmetry or an imbalance between the positive and negative charges that are present. You can see in the negative field that I've already created that there was more negative charges than there were positive. And similarly, in this next field that I'm creating, the positive charge field, there is a asymmetry or an imbalance between the negative and positives where the positive field is in excess or positive quanta. There are more positive quanta than there are negative. So we end up with a positive charge field as opposed to the negative. But both of them have a squared number quanta and they can be described as either E equals NH nu in a generic sense or more specifically is E equals N nu squared because there's obviously a squared number of Planck quanta in the fields. The quanta themselves can also be described as quantum inductors in the electrical sense. That is to say, if you were to model those fields that I've just shown you with an inductive component at the bottom, as in a normal electrical circuit, and then short circuit those inductors together to form a triangular geometry, the physics and the flux of energy within those fields can be modeled as shown there. You'll see throughout tetragonics that I have these semi-transparent rotational vectors and that's simply to make an association between the electrical theory idea of a quantum inductor or quantum inductive circuit and that of quantized angular momentum and inertia. The flux can be in one of two directions in a inductive circuit as shown here clockwise or anti-clockwise resulting in positive or negative charges they can in an electrical sense exactly model what a zero point field is or a Planck quantum we have positive and negative arrangements resulting or charges resulting from the north south south north fields and we can describe the charge via its quanta by how many subunits of charge are within that equilateral geometry Of note is the fact that as opposed to current texts, the zero point field is indeed a single quantum, as I showed originally. It is just a equilateral quantum of energy. And it does not oscillate backwards and forwards, i.e. it does not go clockwise then anti-clockwise. The clockwise direction is unidirectional at all times within that charged field. It's only when you invert the, uh, the quanta that you get this oscillation. So from a, a quantum perspective, zero point fields, Planck quanta are one and the same as are ideal inductive circuits. Once charged, the energy in that circuit continues to flow indefinitely and it can inductively couple with other charged quanta in order to make larger structures, i.e. fields of mass energy, geometric fields of mass energy, or standing wave matter topologies where the mass energy is uh, conducted in a standing wave fashion or in a, uh, circular, a circulation within the matter topology to create the physics of matter as we know it within physics and within the standard model. Obviously these Planck quanta can come together in a number of ways. I've just shown the charge field in this case. But also they can come together side by side to create what are termed Z bosons. These two are neutral Z bosons and there's another geometry that can arise and that is of a photon. The photon in this case has a different geometry to that of a neutral Z boson. The energy momenta is identical in both cases, as is the, the net charge, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And the photon, again, is its own antiparticle. So a, another photon, identical, an identical photon like that 
moving towards the original photon will result in cancellation. You can see that it's due to its its coordinates and its geometry within the spatial coordinates, it's a mirror image of the original, even though a simple translation brings it back to being an identical particle. So in the case of photons, they are their own antiparticle. And of course, the mirror symmetry and the translation still applies whether you rotate or whether you flip over. There is always a translation of the charges within those fields. Within tetrionics, I refer to these individual planar geometries as mass energies. And when they make a closed matter topology, whereas there is a closed volume taken up by the Planck quanta or created by the Planck quanta in a spatial coordinate system, they're then referred to as a matter topology. Obviously, in addition to the photon, there also exists a chance for charged or same charged particles, for, sorry, same charged geometries, mass energy geometries to come together. In this case, you can see that we have two negatives or two positives coming together, whereas we had an equal distribution before. So we end up with a positive charge field in this case and a negative charge field. Because the energy momenta, just like the photons, is in opposition, these are called electrostatic fields. These are the charge fields that you find around um, charged particles. Positive charges, negative charges have these field geometries made up of photons of electrostatic charges, as seen here. The difference between the photons of ra or radiant photons and electrostatic photons is quite simply that in the case of a uh, electrostatic photon you can see that the north-south magnetic dipoles which are always present cancel themselves out that is they end up with a, a net zero magnetic dipole in the center of the field but they have an enhanced electric field due to the arrangements of their dipoles whereas the radiant photon has a cancelled electric field or a neutral electric field but it has a reinforced or uh, magnetic dipole magnetic moment this is commonly referred to in physics as the Evans photomagneton and it's this magnetic dipole within the photon that allows light to be bent within electromagnetic fields as in the Faraday rotation etc Obviously, we can create many, many fields made up of photons, and they'll have a self-similar geometry. That is to say, as we add photons of energy together to make larger EM fields, and these arrangements aren't correct so far as the distribution of charge, but obviously it's done to show that an electromagnetic field of mass energy momenta made up of photons of the same creates the same geometry. But in this case, we have an electromagnetic field with more energy momenta than it, that of a single photon or indeed a single Planck quanta. When we bring all these charges together, and this would be a, a typical micro uh, nano view of an electrical discharge or a uh, particle collision where the particles are converted into mass energy. We can form many fields as I said of particular note where the four typical arrangements that result and that is of a positive or a negative charge field or a similar arrangement that results in a neutral charge two positive two negative or two negative two positive these four arrangements are what lead to the basic building blocks of matter. At this stage, they are still mass energy geometries. They are planar, flat pieces of paper representing mass energy. They have no Z component, no height, no volume, 
and as such I term them fields they're the basic components of EM fields in fact if you wanted a neutral electromagnetic field that is what you bring together and you'd see you still in this arrangement have a north pole and a south pole in the magnetic dipole of the field as well as radiant energy momenta spreading out from the central point with a convergent vector force as well that convergent vector force is what gives us Coulomb's law of attraction between charges you can see in this case we have a charge arrangement in both directions and there is a subcomponent of a convergent force which is less than the divergent force so any equilateral field arrangement of energy momenta will always result in a divergent electrostatic charge so the charge in this case there's three of them uh, three energy momenta are forcing the field energies outwards but there still remains a diverge a convergent um, component which is how electrostatic fields of force attract opposites while repelling the same charges we can go into that more in more detail the point of this discussion is just to show you the basic building blocks of the subatomic particles or all the the, uh, the basic components of how we build the standard model particles using tetrionics I can't count the number of times people have looked at these basic models and, and shrugged their shoulders or thought they knew how they worked obviously as I highlighted before with the Lorentz transformations of charges depending on which way you're looking at it there are things that don't that that seem straightforward but in reality can only be learnt by using these models I encourage everyone that's struggling to try and get their head around tetrionics in these models where they feel they have a problem to physically build the model by building the model your spatial awareness of these fields and how they change with simple bending and arrangements increases remarkably and then a lot of the the things that you've learnt in school and in university change considerably and you also get a, a very clear and concise um, understanding visual understanding of how physics works at this stage as I said we only have mass energy geometries these are radiant charges or energy momenta um, they can be measured as mass energy per second in each case or we can take the square root of the squared number and calculate for the linear momentum which is mass velocity squared so as we increase the number of quanta h nu squared or n h nu per second in any of these fields we increase the mass and the linear momenta of the system which of course can also create increases in velocity for any particles that they're associated with before I jump into the next one one important point to bring up which creates no end of confusion is the relationship between NH nu and NHF that is the Planck-Einstein relationship Planck quanta as I said are simply triangles of energy they can be positive as shown here or they can be negative charges but they are single quanta nu as in number whereas Einstein's photon the quantum of electromagnetic force is in fact a quantum harmonic oscillator it is two Planck quanta inductively coupled to form a frequency from positive to negative where the positive begins again it is not a single quanta of charge it is a dual charged boson two W bosons plus and minus come together to form the photon to equate H nu to HF is incorrect mathematically it's akin to saying 1 equals 2 or odds equals evens and it must be stopped at, at all possible avenues and this is just a classic example of where mathematics without the geometry fails to express exactly what's going on you'll often hear me stating and writing 
that if maths is the language of physics, then geometry is its grammar. And this is a classic example where the geometry of Planck's constant and how we form bosons and photons corrects the mathematics. That statement of uh, H nu equals HF, or doesn't equal in that case, but where you see it is, if you see it as N H nu equals HF, is perfectly valid. But you can't say H nu equals HF, which is classically how it's been interpreted. Nu being a frequency or a number of Planck quanta equaling the frequency of photons. It becomes self-evident, and particularly where you're doing spectral lines and atomic transitions, that H nu does not equal HF. It's an important point to make, and uh, hence why I made it at this stage. It refers to mass energy geometries and how we model them in tetrionics. These four mass energy arrangements, or mass energy momenta arrangements, can radiate out from their, their point of creation as electromagnetic fields or electrostatic fields in the case of the top two. Under the right conditions and the, uh, the right um, sources, there's another form of uh, energy that can take place through, or another form of energy that can be created using these quanta in physics. And this is where tetrionic starts to jump out from the standard modeling. What you'll see here is me simply doing what everyone should do when they attempt to read through tetrionics and attempt to grow familiar with the theory. It's something I've done countless times, as you'll see. But it's the essence of what differentiates mass or mass energies from matter. Mass energies is a set of planar. They're like sheets of paper. They stack up on top of each other. They can interact to create fields of force and fields of interaction between particles. And they can create electromagnetic fields around particles. But these fields, as I said, under the right conditions, and we'll discuss that in other lectures, can also be rearranged to form standing wave matter topologies. Now, the, the matter topology they form is unlike anything you'll see in the standard model at present, but it is the building block of all matter. And all I'm doing here is putting a translation or a, a fold in these fields. It's not how they're physically created, but it's how we make these models in order to model all the other particles. And we simply fold them after cutting them out, and then we sticky tape them together. As you can see there, we still have our positive charges, sorry, yeah, positive charges, and we still have the negative charge fields. But in this case, what they form, once taped together, are these: a positive charge, a negative standing wave, and two neutral standing waves. Again, all that's required to make these come together. A sim two simple, or one simple, three simple folds and a bit of sticky tape. And what we have are what I call tetrions. There's no name for these in the standard model because they're not acknowledged in the standard model. They are four pi, four equilateral, closed standing waves. So four pi topologies. You can see they have a z component. There is height as well as x and y, width and breadth, and they take up a volume. They have a closed volume within them. And again, all the charges are present that were in the fields, but in this case, they formed a matter topology. Within Throughout tetrionics, you'll always hear me referring to mass energy geometries and matter topologies. These are the building blocks of all matter. You'll note that in the case of the two neutral ones that are possible, they are, for all intents and purposes, identical. The translation of one to the other is, is 90 degrees. Once you rotate one of the others back 90 degrees, they form identical particles. So what we can take from that is that 
out of the basic building blocks of matter, there are four particles, half of which are charged and half of which are neutral. So one half of the building blocks are neutral, the other half are either positive or negative. And it's through these arrangements of plus and minus charges on these fascia of the matter topologies of the tetrions that we build all the other subatomic particles. But as I said, these particles are unknown in the current model as it currently stands because they've been mistaken for other particles and because the current model as it stands, the standard model, builds up on mathematical grounds and interprets four pi topologies for matter and fields to be spherical, circular fields or spherical point particles. In this case we can clearly show that from the electromagnetic fields and the, the photons and bosons of the standard model we build a tetrion and it's this particle that gives its name to tetrionic theory obviously. It's the building block of all the subatomic particles. So how do these particles come together? Quite simply, they just arrange themselves in groups so that these plus and minus charges can interact. Minus, and they, they interact so that the dipole, the magnetic dipoles, align to each other and that the opposite charges attract. And when they do, they come together like that. It is as simple as that. They can come together in any number of arrangements, being basically all resulting from positive and negative charges. They can form two, and from those two, they can then attract an additional one. In this case, it turns around, and you can see how they start to come together. You'll see this reflected time and time again in the geometries or in the illustrations that I give for tetrionic theory. Most notably an illustration like this out of the QME book where again you can see the fields and quite simply the four pi geometries fold up. It's not the folding of space-time as commonly referred to in uh, relativity because in tetrionics we separate space from time with time being a measure of the quantized or the changing quantized angular momentum of a system per second well, that creates seconds and charge is a measure of mass, mass seconds we won't go into too de much detail on that but suffice to say at this stage we've now got the basics for building matter and again in doing so we've differentiated between bosons and photons, bosons being mass, planar mass energies that result in a charge, two positives, one negative, becomes a plus W boson, two negatives and a positive will be a negative W boson, just as the individuals are plus and minus charges. But where they couple to form a dual geometry or a diamond or a rhombic shape, they then form a photon. Now that photon can be either a neutral photon or force or it can be an electrostatic photon either one and again just retouching you'll see this illustration in the tetrionics ebook in QM it's the generic genesis uh, illustration showing that we start with the weak force the magnetic dipoles of the charged fields the bosons coupling to form electrostatic or electromagnetic or magnetostatic which are normally referred to as magnetic fields and that these squared geometries or equilateral fields can then come together to form positive, negative or neutral tetrions and that these tetrions can then combine via their charged fascia as I just mentioned to form the building blocks of all matter via the strong force where these positive and negative charges align and come together as fascia parallel to each other side by side they form a strong force this binding force between the electric and the magnetic fields 
of the two parallel fascia is extremely strong. Far stronger than the edge magnetic dipole of those same fields. So the edges where the magnetic dipoles form is the weak force and parallel fascia or two tetrions combining via their parallel charge fascia is the strong force. So how does this relate to the standard models of particles as we've discussed them? Well obviously I've created some basic templates to lead us through that but you'll see that there are four immediate particles that form from the tri combination or three tetrions combining together. These result in various charges but the first thing that becomes immediately apparent is that they are not um, elementary charges, they are sub fractions of the elementary charge and in fact the elementary charge is quickly resolved to be a, uh, a 12 quantum charge. That is to say that the minus one and the plus one of electrons and protons respectively is in fact minus 12 and plus 12. So the first particles that can be formed by the um, creation or the addition of plus and minus tetrions and neutral tetrions together is the down quark. The down quark as you can see here in this model or this illustration is made up of three tetrions. Two neutral tetrions which are plus minus combinations and a negative tetrion which is four or has four charge negative charge fascia. Where you see neutral tetrions a lot of the information and a lot of the properties that refer that apply to neutral tetrions, matter particles, actually describes gluons in the standard models. So in that sense they perform the same role, they're actually gluing particles of different charge together. It's the opposite charges, in this case the positive negative combining and the negative positive, that brings the charged fascia together to create a matter topology. There's three tetrions which results in 12 quantum charges. So it's it's part of the dodecion uh, particle family so far as geometries go. There's 12 charges of mass energy. But when these positive and negative charges come together to make the particle collapse, which I'll show shortly, it creates a closed matter topology of 8 pi, an octahedral. So just to be clear, we have 12 mass energy, charged mass energy geometries resulting in a octahedral matter topology. There's a distinction between geometries and topologies that's very important to take care of and to understand fully. And of course, the charge that results when you add up all the charges on these two neutral and one negative tetrion is a negative four. Four positives and eight negatives are within that matter topology, some of which are hidden. They form hidden partitions, if you like, which can't be discovered through mathematics, can't even be seen because they are truly subatomic particles that only last for a, a fleeting fraction of a second. These are the particles that are created inside the Large Hadron Collider as baryons are smashed together. So we have a negative 4. Negative 4 out of 12 is actually negative 1 third, which is the quark or elementary charge of the down quark. Similarly, we can do the same thing with two positive charges, a gluon or a neutral tetrion, to form the same topologies, but in this case the 12 mass energies made up of two positives, one neutral, create a octahedral matter topology with a charge of plus 8, which results from the 10 positive charged fascia and 2 negative charged fascia. So plus 8 out of 12 is plus 2 thirds. That's the charge of the up quark. 
and just to, to highlight those same arrangements here you can see we have two positives and a neutral there's two negatives and two positives where they combine via these charges they simply fold up and you can see how the four mass how four mass energy geometries charge fascia out of the 12 mass energy geometries that existed to start with are now hidden as the particle is created resulting in a particle that only has to outside observers a matter topology of 8 pi it's an octahedral similarly over here we have two neutrals with a negative tetrion they combine and they form the same matter topology but in this case it's a differing um, charge topology that results the first one was a positive quark and the one I just showed was a negative or a, sorry was a, a um, an up quark and a down quark you can see at a quick glance it's obvious up is positive down is negative so far as the external topologies go but the base geometries or charge fascia are identical and this becomes important within the baryons themselves similarly there's still two more arrangements that can be formed in this case we have a positive charge and two neutrals coming together in this case we have two negatives with a neutral or a gluon holding them together where you see the gluons obviously the the inference can be given immediately that gluons in an electrical sense can act as a dielectric particle that is they separate they they tend to appear between um, charged particles they bond to the charged particle either side because of their opposite charges and they act as a just a neutral particle between charged ones between charged tetrions I'll just move them out of the way and I'll move the two particles that they create you can see in this case the particles they created is the mirror image of each other where you had the positive charges negative charges here you have positive charges there my apologies if this gets a bit upside down to everyone but hopefully you can follow the difference being again opposite charges so that's a down quark this this one here is the anti-down this is the up quark plus eight positive charges all round this is the anti-up negative charges all round and even though it has negative charges it's quite distinct from the up quark which is negative bar the two bottom fascia which are positive so in this case what we've just modeled now using three tetrions or tri-tetrion arrangements are the up quarks the dodecions uh, mass energy geometries up anti-ups downs anti-downs and if you want to model strange top bottom charmed etc all you have to do is add more mass energies to their charged fascia again a squared number of mass energies because they are equilateral geometries so by simply increasing the mass energy of the um, charged fascia you can turn these into the various forms of other exotic quarks that are formed in high energy collisions or equivalently you could have one of these um, standard actually these are the standard one of these up or down quarks moving at high speed and the mass energies of their fields of motion their chem fields would result in a measurement that leads you to believe that it's a heavier quark or it's an oscillation between various forms of quarks the quarks that form from the, the well, from the 12 pi charged fascia as I said form when you have gluons surrounding charged tetrions but there also exists which are these ones here they're the quarks they also exist in the dodecion family 12 charged fascia not just octahedrals 
but also the possibility to create dodecahedrals. And those dodecahedrals form what we classically call leptons. They are identical particles um, so far as the number of charged mass energies that make up the particles. They're both 12 pi, but through the interaction of their plus and minus charges, the strong force between the parallel fascia, we create quarks, as we've just touched on there, but we can also create another form of particle, which is far more common, which are the leptons. Positrons, whoops, we'll get the right ones. There's the positron. Electrons and neutrinos. Now, a few points worth of discussion here, obviously. Where three negative charged tetrions come together, they will repel instead of attracting between the charged fascia. So there's no strong force interaction in these particular matter topologies. But what does exist is the opposite attraction or weak force interaction along the axis of these three tetrions. So leptons are held together by the weak force, unlike quarks that are held together by the strong force. The leptons have a unique matter topology to that of a quark. As you can see, the quarks close themselves back up, whereas the lepton remains open. But it's held together along this central axis. The central axis has, a, has no magnetic moment when it's stationary. As you can see there, the north and south dipoles cancel themselves out. So there's no magnetic moment, even though it's bound via the weak interaction. But there's a strong negative charge. In fact, in the case of the electron, it's entirely composed of negative charged fascia. Whereas the positron, the antiparticle of the electron, is comprised of positive charges, not unremarkably. Again, same thing exists where the weak force holds the particle together in its particular geometry, and the geometry is that of a quantum rotor. If anyone's done any work with three-phase rotors, you'll recognize that shape immediately, and that's the role that the leptons play in the atom. They're the rotor component. These charged fascia then, of course, have 12 negative charges or 12 positive charges, and that gives us either a Plus 12, a plus 12 or minus 12 quantum charge, which is equivalent to a plus or minus 1 elementary charge, as normally stated in the, the standard model or most textbooks. Again, I always differentiate between quantum charges, plain quantum charges, and that of elementary charges, just to clarify that there is a factor of 12 going on there. So what happens with these other ones, the ones made up of neutral tetrions? Well they obviously end up with a neutral charge. Equal positive and negative quanta, six of each, results in zero charge. Whether it's with the positive charges on the outside or the negative on the outside makes no difference. Where there's negative on the outside, there's positive on the inside. Where there's positive on the outside, there's negative on the inside. There's an equal balance of plus and minus charges. So these particular particles became known as the neutrinos or little new nu neutral ones of course of interest is the fact that mass energy in this case shows us that or well, the geometry show us that they are identical size particles to electrons and positrons what differs is the number of quanta in the charge fascia as I mentioned in the previous discussion with the quarks turning them into strange and and uh, top and bottom, etc. In this case, we can oscillate between the various forms of um, leptons by simply changing the amount of quanta. In fact, we show in tetrionics that these neutral, or neutrinos, are the simplest ones that can form. They can form out of 12 
charge fascia or three neutral tetrions and they only have to have one quanta each so we can give a, an exact value to the mass of the matter topology for neutrinos at last and likewise leptons and sorry electrons and positrons are identical mass ma identical matter topologies but in this case they have 1 by 10 to the 19 Planck quanta per charged fascia giving them a much higher mass than what these are these are the lightest second lightest particles out there obviously they're made up of three tetrions and the tetrions are the lightest particles that can be created and these are often mistaken for other particles so whether you add energy to the fascia to make the part the rest matter rest mass matter topologies heavier when they had the same physical uh, geometric topologies sizes or whether you add energy via way of the chem fields these are the fields of, of motion in this case we have the top view of the leptons and all we're doing in these energy levels is increasing the number of Planck quanta nh nu or specifically um, h nu squared for each energy level as the energy increases the velocity of the particle can travel at increases it's just like the wake on a boat and of course when this field itself here is created with its kinetic energy its linear momentum it also has or creates a magnetic moment so whereas the lepton or the electron the negative lepton when it's stationary has no magnetic moment they cancel out as you can see they've all cancelled everywhere over the, the particle itself but it has an electric charge a negative electric charge when it is in motion when energy is applied to its chem field or stored in its chem field a velocity results so it's in motion with that there's an associated linear momentum and a magnetic moment that wasn't there prior this is what creates magnetic moments not changes of reference flame frames as stated in special relativity so of course whether we add the, the mass energy to the charge fascia to make the rest mass matter heavier in a gravitational field or whether we add the energy to the chem field is irrespective because all we're doing is adding mass energy geometries or Planck quanta to the particle or associating it with the particle in the case of adding it to the chem field it results in a motion whereas adding it to the charged fascia it just makes the particle heavier while it's at rest and this increases or decreases of energy in the chem fields is also what gives rise to the lepton oscillations so tetrionics now accounts for the matter antimatter particles of the leptons as well as the quarks and we can also see that as we add mass energy geometries to the chem fields we increase the mass energy of the matter topologies or associated with the matter topologies to turn electrons into muons and turn muons into tau electrons or tau neutrinos however you wish to whichever one you want to do as the tau neutrino slows down or lose, reduces velocity it will oscillate from tau to mu back to an ordinary neutrino and of course the antimatter particle components are all accounted for in there as well so as a quick summary so far as the dodecahedron family goes the 12 mass energy geometry particles that can be created from the plus and minus Planck quanta from those simple geometries of mass energy momentum Planck quanta we now show that when 12 of them come together to form matter topologies they create either quarks antiquarks leptons or neutrinos and of course the opposite charges all exist we account for all the charges within the standard model within these paper models and we account for all the oscillations that occur of course highlighting the fact that partial elementary charges and elementary charges are in fact multiples of 12 compared to what the 
current textbooks say. So where do we go from there? Obviously we've made our uh, quarks and antiquarks and our leptons. What can we build from there? Obviously the next candidate is simply bringing various quarks together and that's what we're doing here. In this case we've brought a down quark you can see it has the positive charge bottoms two down quarks and we have an up quark completely positive in this arrangement and in this one we have two up quarks and in the middle there's a down quark again with its positive bottom again these will interact via their charged fascia plus and minus plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, and they simply, in the paper case, fold up like that. They form a complex polyhedral. In this case, we have three quarks, so 3 times 12 is 36 pi charged fascia to account for. 36 um, mass energy geometries of charge, but when they combine, and close up like that obviously some of these charged fascia are hidden as well as within the quark as well as the quarks themselves combining at these points and the end result is a 20 pi matter topology again 36 pi mass energies 20 pi matter topologies so if you wanted to name these as per the platonic table or platonic solids, you would call these particular particles that are formed from the tri-quark arrangements icosahedrals. 20 charge fascia are presented externally once they're formed, but they are comprised of 36 charged fascia. Um, there's an intermediate step I'll come back to. But suffice to say at this stage, the baryon family, as they're, they're commonly known, are illustrated in the tetrionics work as these. You can see that we have the side elevations as well as the top elevations for both the proton for the neutrons and the protons, or the positive and negative charge particles. But there are also positive and neutral, I should say, but there are also negative charged elementary charge particles that can be created, the antiparticle of the proton, antiprotons, and they play a role. But tetrionics, as you see here, this time the tetrionic illustration shows the mass energy geometries of the proton as it is before they combine. Sorry, that's the neutron. Before they combine in this arrangement. So in this case, I've left them open so you can see that the strong force interacts between those two charged fascia to give us this intermediate step and that from there it obviously folds up to give us these topologies and in this case you can see from the top viewing from the top you have all positive charges and from the bottom you have positive charges with a negative because of the neg because of the down quark and that's what's shown there. The arrangements and the geometries of protons and neutrons are quite distinct. And again, the proton made up of 36 charges, 24 of which are positive, 12 are negative in this matter topology, gives us or results in a negative, sorry, a positive 12 elementary charge and if you think about the previous particles we've done the opposite of that would be the negative 12 lepton or electron as it's termed you can see we now have completely distinct matter topologies for electrons and protons and they're not familiar at all to any of those that have been studying the classical or even the modern textbooks these are no longer spherical point charges they are faceted um, platonic solids made up of mass energies and mass energy momenta. They are quite distinct 
but then I've applied these topologies to chemistry, cosmology, etc., to bring about the unified theory. And these arrangements of charges fully account for all the properties of the standard model, plus corrections as we're touching on as we go through this particular video. So there you have the proton and the electron, which is a little bit wobbly in this case, in their full glory. This is what you would see if we could develop a quantum microscope, um, use gamma rays to look at the proton as it rotates in electron as they rotate about themselves in free space we would see this faceted arrangement of charges and magnetic dipoles within the matter topologies we don't at present because they are far too small to measure and if we use a gamma ray of a small wavelength to reflect off these facets it adds so much energy to the, the particle the energy momentum of the gamma ray moves the particle or it causes it to, to break up into other particles and other reactions. The reactions for tetrions combining is very similar to, chemistry, to chemical reactions in chemistry. There's a balancing that must go on between the charges of the, ma the mass energy um, geometries, but while mass energy geometries or charge mass energy geometries are conservative, they must balance out, matter topologies aren't, which means to say that you can bring a positron and an electron together they collide break up their matter topologies and the charge fascia and quanta of those matter topologies can form an EM wave and that's what we see in particle physics they don't necessarily have to form another matter topology they could of course form two neutrinos or many neutrinos given the number of quanta but the mass energy number the number of Planck quanta and the, um, the the charges must always be the same after as what it was before the collisions. So another thing of note with protons and neutrons is the arrangement of the quarks within them. As we've discussed with the tetrions, in the case of protons and neutrons, three quarks come together. This is a proton, obviously, which is reflective of this topology I was just showing you. It's made up of 36 charge fascia within three quarks to give us 20 charge, 20 fascia on the matter topology. You'll note that the arrangement is up, down, up, not up, up, down. As with all charges, you need opposites to attract. You can't put two positive charges together, as it's normally stated in the, the physics books of up, up, down for a proton. The two ups simply will not combine. They will repel each other because of their same charge fascia. So wherever a baryon forms, it must always be an arrangement of, of dissimilar charges, up, down, or plus, minus, plus, or, in the case of a neutron, minus, plus, minus. And you can start to see the pattern that appears within the, the baryons themselves. They are triquark arrangements of positive and negative charges. In this case, albeit quarks of partial charges, or plus or minus four or eight quantum charges, they combine and they create either a proton, of a plus one elementary charge or 12 quantum charge or a neutron with a net neutral charge. It's the arrangement of the plus and minus charges within the down up down quarks. Negative four, negative four, plus eight that gives us a neutral. Gives us an equal mix of positive and negative charges whereas the up down up arrangement gives us plus 12 the positive um, elementary charge. The uh, So wherever you see up, up, down, or down, down, up, etc., it's incorrect. It should be down, up, down, up, down, up. This becomes important for chemical bonding, where you want to form larger and larger elements. 
Um, one of the other mysteries of physics at present is how positive protons go about attracting neutral neutrons to form deuterium and, and larger elements. How do these large numbers of neutrons in heavy elements, for example, or any elements, get attracted to the proton? The proton obviously has a positive charge, whereas the neutron in the standard model is neutral. We now show that the neutron is topologically identical to the proton, but in this case, the charge arrangements are such that instead of a positive charge for the proton, we end up with a neutral charge. The interesting part is that this arrangement of up, down, up, plus, minus, plus, mirrors, minus, plus, minus. And this is how neutrons are attracted to protons. They simply combine, I'll try and get it around the right way. They're attracted like that. I'll have another illustration to show this a little bit better. Via their opposite charges, the best way to show it is here. The triquarks for the down quark, the trielectric fields, and their linear momenta focus at an apex, as do the up quarks focus at an apex in the proton. And likewise, the down Oops, the down and up quarks do similarly in the neutrons. Where they're separated, obviously colomic attraction results between the positive and negative charges, and it simply brings them together like this. As simple as that, a little bit of a rough model, but that's it. That's the bonding between opposite charges as per the second law of tetrionics, which simply says that um, energy in all its forms seeks equilibrium. Charge is just an arrangement, an asymmetrical arrangement of energy and momenta, as we discussed in the beginning of the video. And this asymmetric arrangement of charge, of energy and momenta, will seek equilibrium. And it does so by just binding like that. And that results in a deuteron. This is a deuterium nuclei without an electron. Obviously, Despite the positive and negative charges, if you add them up, as per these here, you'll find that you still have, when a neutron binds to a proton, you still have a plus 12 charge resulting out of all the charge distributions within the, the deuteron nuclei. And that plus 12 then will obviously attract, will seek equilibrium even further, and attract electrons to the deuterium nuclei, to the deuterons, to create deuterium. So, as a quick summary of where we've gone so far, the charged particles have all been built from equilateral plane quanta, zero point fields, plus and minus, one pi geometries. We then created tetrions, the building blocks of all matter, of which there were two charged uh, topologies and two neutrals that are identical to each other, even though they're made in differing manners. Those four quanta then combine as they seek equilibrium to create the up and down quark arrangements along with top, strange, bottom and charmed. And they create the leptons, which are electrons, positrons and neutrinos within the same family. The quarks and leptons are now shown to be within the same family, they're subfamilies of the same family, that is the dodecahedrons, they're 12 pi mass energy geometries, but in the case of the quark subfamily, they result in an 8 pi or octahedral topology versus the 12 pi or dodecahedral topology of the leptons. And then, of course, we can combine in a sub-step to creating baryons. We can combine quarks and antiquarks to create the meson family, which have 24 pi mass energies, creating 14 pi matter topologies. They are just quarks and antiquarks combining. And then, of course, with the addition of an extra quark, we can create the baryon family, 
which are protons, neutrons, antineutrons and antiprotons, 36 pi mass energies and 20 pi matter topologies. So from the basics of a single equilateral quantum, we now have all the subatomic particles up to the deuterium nuclei. Of course, it brings about the question of this subatomic particle or particle zoo that you hear often about. And tetrionics obviously must have an answer for that, and it does. The particle zoo is simply the result of three quarks combining as per the baryons to form a typical baryon, but in this case, the mass energies of the matter topologies have been increased. I've done up a, a simple table showing that no matter how you arrange the, uh, the quarks or how you combine the quarks via their opposite charge distributions to create the strong force, you end up with uh, 216 possible baryons that can be created from those three quark arrangements or six quark, sorry, three quark arrangements. If you count the antimatter uh, equivalents of these particles you would have 512 possible particles that can be created. They vary in charge between one of four charges, one of three, sorry, four. They can be a negative elementary charge, a neutral, a positive elementary charge, plus 12, or a double elementary charge, plus 24, where you have three similar quarks. These 24s only exist for a fraction because they're obviously all the same charge. So if under the right conditions they could be brought together and held under external forces, pushing them together to overcome the colomic repulsion, you could form a temporary plus two elementary charge, which upon reduction of the energy and pressure conditions would immediately decay into three quarks, three up quarks. Um, what do they look like? They look exactly the same as any other baryons. Here's a sample. A sample. There are, in fact, um, many. There's probably about five, I think, pages where I've gone through the various particles of the particle zoo and shown their charge um, distribution and their matter topologies in both cases for each and every one of them. Obviously, the, the common ones are protons and neutrons, and the lambdas and sigmas, etc. But again, in tetrionics, using the mass energy geometries and the charges, we can show the full charge distribution for each and every one of these particles. We can show the matter topologies and the arrangements of quarks again, always following the um, the equalization, the, the positive negative uh, distributions, negative positive, not positive positive, negative negative, etc. And again, just to highlight what holds these together in most cases, in the case of baryons, are these neutral tetrions, what are normally called gluons, although in modern physics the gluons are described as, as fields of force. They're like a strong force holding it together. In tetrionics, we show that they are in fact neutral tetrions. As you can see here, when you create protons and neutrons, the arrangement of the the tetrions within the quark or the, the baryon topologies is such that there are neutral or charged um, tetrions adjacent to neutrals. So the neutrals, as I said, act as a dielectric, separating the charged quarks from each other in both cases. And even within that complex distribution of charged tetrions and neutral or gluons tetrions, we still create this positive and negative field electric field apexes within the quarks so as to um, bring about or facilitate the residual strong force. Obviously there's, there's one other, as you build these models you'll come across one other arrangement that presents itself and these are what I call glue balls and they, they build on from the uh, neutral tetrions or the gluons, simply their arrangement of neutral tetrions that can come together. And in this case, as I've built the models from to show that it is possible, it's not just a me drawing pretty pictures for the sake of it, 
these models do exist and these particles do exist I call them the Omega particle they're an arrangement of 20 um, tetrions, neutral tetrions specifically and this arrangement of 20 in its flat form here actually then combines as you see me doing via their opposite charges in every single case an opposite a plus is attracting to a minus and the particle will then close up to form if I can do it right an omega particle as I term it this doesn't appear in the textbooks but a bit awkward trying to hold it and do it but you can see that it does form an omega particle the interesting thing about omega particles is that they are completely neutral they're a um, like an icosahedral geometry topology I should say but um, obviously quite distinct from that of a neutron that's the neutron down up down this is an icosahedral or uh, an omega particle topology made up of 20 neutral part neutral tetrions or gluons hence I term them glue balls obviously um, neutrinos and neutrons also fall into the glue ball family but the interesting one of course is the this icosahedral topology completely neutral but at the same time while it is completely neutral it has a distinct negative pole and positive electric dipole within the matter topology completely negative at this end completely positive at this end so that matter topology while neutral still has the potential to be manipulated through electromagnetic fields or electric fields in particular um, to do various things and they become of interest down the track obviously just as we've just built that one with neutral particles you can do the same thing from the charged tetrions and you can build up various other forms of non I call them charge balls they're exactly the same as quarks except their charge distribution is different so they're detected as different forms of quark despite or as a particular form of quark despite having a different charge arrangement I won't get into too much detail but there's two forms a stable form and unstable form the stable ones will quickly decay because of these similar positive charges will always decay quickly back into their constituent quarks that then combine to form other baryons the stable form however has identical charges to that of a um, bottom quark but in this case obviously they have the same matter topologies as protons and neutrons up down up down up down but their charge is that of a uh, bottom quark possibly mistaken for them because the baryon mass energies makes them heavier than a normal down a normal um, down quark so therefore they'd be mistaken as a on the basis of charge mass ratios as a um, bottom quark when in fact they are a baryon just a, as I term them charge balls um, so just to finalize things up because it's been a, a fairly lengthy discussion so far just running through the models we've made the protons these CAD models are done courtesy of uh, uh, Rennie Cormier um, in Canada who sat down and did the 3D models they're all available in the Google SketchUp warehouse if you want to look at the 3D CAD models and rotate them about but I do encourage you to build the paper models because until you physically start building these models and becoming accustomed to their arrangements and their the physical geometries that are associated with them it's very easy to get confused and uh, to assume that things happen or assume that things line up in a certain way when in fact they don't you can see here in the wireframe model uh, down up down for the neutron up down up for the posit for the proton they then combine as we did previously simply the proton 
comes together with the neutron just as shown before click like that and this is the basis of the um, residual strong force that brings nuclei together to form larger and larger elements the deuterons 36 pi topology so it's a 72 pi mass energy geometry for the um, deuteron without, that's a deuterium nuclei without the um, electron again the unified field equation shows us 36 pi we have to account for all the mass energy within the matter topology even though the matter topology in both cases ends up being 20 pi it is made up of 36 pi or 36 charge fascia so we have to account for all the mass energies in that charged matter topology even though we can't measure them as I mentioned the positive and negative charges between the parallel faces of the quarks and between the within the quarks themselves come together this is this blue area that's shaded it forms the strong force within the uh, baryons charge topology they're highlighted in dark blue within the books again may not show up the best in the videos but um, feel free to download the books and go through them the books will have them in full color you can see them in much better quality than here obviously we can create the basic hydrogen family from these combinations or these attractions between the well, leftover um, elementary charges we can bring plus 12 quantum charges together with negative 12 as it seeks equilibrium to form hydrogen we can do the same thing but at the same time also add through the opposite charges of the neutron remembering it's not just a neutral it's made up of plus and minus charges so the opposite electric field charges of the um, neutron compared to the proton will bring the two together and create a deuterium nuclei and if we increase the mass energies of these charge fascia in the deuterium nuclei either as it's formed or once it's formed um, we create heavier and heavier elements in this case an N7 um, charge fascia of a deuterium nuclei equates to it having enough extra quanta within the matter topology to equal a, uh, a neutron so from a measurement perspective what is an N7 radioactive tritium uh, deuterium nuclei or tritium as we call it um, N7 energy levels can be mistaken for an element that has a proton and two neutrons purely on the basis of its mass as it's measured these strong forces as I mentioned obviously within the the nuclei hold the tetrions within the quarks or hold the tetrions together to form quarks those quarks are then held together via the strong force to form baryons as we've shown in these models and those baryons then combine via the residual strong force these plus and minus charge fascia the apexes these baryons then combine side by side um, let's see if I can grab this other one let's see how good my manual dexterity is we can see that we have plus and minuses holding that deuterium nuclei together I'll just do that one because it's held together but equally we still have charge fascia interactions that can occur at the top and bottom of this deuterium nuclei and that's in fact what will happen you can uh, for simplicity attract another neutron to the arrangement via these charge fascia as you see there in this case instead of forming at the middle of the deuterium nuclei it's formed at the top edges to bring together the uh, the classical model of tritium which is proton neutron proton sorry neutron proton neutron um, and of course this this pattern can repeat you can continue to build this up you can have two um, deuterium nuclei combining side by side or top to bottom 
the deuterium nuclei form what, or deuteron nuclei precisely, form what I call quantum batteries. That's this configuration without the electron. It's just a proton and a neutron combined. They will store mass energy, Planck quanta, within their matter topologies as mass. So the more Planck quanta within these charged fascia, the heavier it gets. Think of it as, uh, as I like to describe it, akin to a gas bottle, a LPG gas, where if you add more gas, it simply gets heavier. So you measure its energy content by its weight. A 9 kilogram bottle has a certain amount of energy stored in the gas. Likewise, a uh, in energy level deuterium nuclei has a certain amount of mass energy stored within its matter topologies. There is nothing physically inside the internals of these tetrions. They are what I call null spaces, empty space. There is no energy, no mass, nothing inside of them, and they play an important role later on in physics and cosmology. But at this stage, all the mass energy, all the Planck quanta, is contained within the um, charged fascia. That is to say, oops, I can get it. Each one of these charged fascia, be it plus or minus, has n number of Planck quanta, or more precisely, um, nu squared Planck quanta. There's always a squared number of mass energy or Planck quanta within an equilateral geometry. Harking back to the beginning of this lecture. So the mass energy is a completely thin thing. It has no Z component. It's 2D mass energies. The charged fascia or the skin of the matter topology is where all the mass energy is stored. In a gravitational field, it's what makes it feel heavy. So as we increase the, the energies, the N levels of these quantum batteries, we increase their mass energies. And that's what's shown here. The electron, or the negative lepton, has the matter topology of a quantum rotor. If you're familiar with electrical engineering, you'll see in the next illustration what role this plays. But the electron will bind within the matter topology of a uh, de deuteron nuclei, and it forms a quantum ro a synchronous rotor, ro a converter, sorry. The deuteron has a negative end and a positive end, cathodes and anodes. Um, again, the neutral, neutron, is made up of positive and negative charges. As we showed in the originals, the neutron is down, up, down. It has a lot of negative charges, particularly at the fascia, at the leading edge of the deuteron nuclei. So you have pos negative positives and negative ends. So you can think of them in terms of a quantum battery. They store energy. You can arrange these just like you can with A cells or other batteries as shown. You can arrange them as parallel arrangements where the voltage that they supply is kept constant, but they can supply more current. Or you can join them end to end, link them up via their positive, via their protons and neutrons in stacks to increase the energies or the voltages, if you like, in the analogy. So instead of three volts out of the parallel arrangement, we have six volts in this arrangement. It's a higher energy level, N2. And accordingly, as they're deuterons, the charge will increase as we increase combinations together, which will attract more and more electrons to that arrangement. That arrangement there is the basic arrangement of all chemical and periodic elements. The uh, synchronous quantum converters that I mentioned, where the electron binds with the deuterium nucle or deuteron nuclei to form deuterium nuclei, is that of a quantum or a synchronous um, rotating converter. As the, the, the electron binds within the, uh, the nucleus, you can see here from the models when I find the electron, which I seem to have misplaced, the deuteron nuclei has an opening. It has a negative, sorry, a plus 12 elementary charge because of its proton and neutron. The electron 
can obviously bind in a number of positions. It can bind on top, on bottom. It can be attracted to the side. Where it's attracted to the side, you can see that we create this arrangement here, as shown in this bottom illustration. The electron binds in the middle. It by this time has motion. It has energy in its chem field. The chem field creates a magnetic moment, like a magnetic bearing. And the electron binds in this position within the atomic nuclei. By binding in there, it's free to continue to spin in that position. And that forms the, the basis of how we make spectral lines and colors in the universe. The energy level of this deuterium nuclei, or this deuteron, determines the kinetic energies of this, lepton, this electron when it binds. As we discussed in the previous one with the photoelectron illustration, as we increase the energies of the chem field, because of the energies, mass energies of the deuteron that it's bound to, the electron wants to move in a straight line. The chem field energies are increased, its magnetic moment is increased. If it wasn't bound, that electron would then seek to um, move in a straight line. And just to bring up the illustration once again, as the energies increased, the square root linear momentum, this part here, increases, which creates a vector force on the electron. The electron wants to move in a straight line, but in this case, it's bound to the deuterium nuclei. If it binds to the top or the bottom, it's weakly bound. If it binds in the central position, it's strongly bound. The weakly bound ones form conductors. Strongly bound ones form insulators where the charges don't move. This chem field energy is determined by the energy of the deuterium or the deuteron. The higher N1 will create an N1 chem field. An N2, two series, will create an N2. 3 in series will create an N3. So on to N8, the highest number of deuterium nuclei in any, in any periodic element. So as these energies increase and electrons are attracted, they bind. It creates a chem field. The electron wants to move in a straight line away from the deuterium nuclei, but it's prevented from doing so because of this magnetic bearing and the, the charge attraction, the clomic charge attraction between the lepton and the baryons, or the nuclei. What happens because it's bound is that that vector force, that linear force, gets converted into a rotational force, angular momentum, classical angular momentum, not to be confused with the quantized angular momentum, which is the equilateral geometry of Planck quanta. Two distinct things. That's quantized angular momentum. This is classical angular momentum. The motion, or vector rotation about a point. In this case, the axis, magnetic axis. Or, and, in ca and also, the atom itself can move. And this will be a, discuss a topic of discussion for other lectures, and we've discussed that on the Tetrionic Science of Life site with Otto, where I've gone into great detail about how these motions come about and how we um, explain even further the principles of chemistry in this case, quantum chemistry. But that's the deuterium nuclei in all its glory, showing all its charge fascia, its mass energy momenta, and its matter topology. And this is the building block for all periodic elements. The hydrogen atom is not the building block for periodic elements. It's Z number of deuterium nuclei that build periodic elements. And that's another discussion entirely in itself. I'll pull this discussion up here at this stage because we've, we've gone on for quite a while, but we've covered all the basic building blocks, all the um, basic particles, subatomic particles of the standard model. And in effect, we've, we've, as I like to term it, we've shown how to save ten billion dollars by not building CERN. Everything that CERN's shown us, plus more in the case of explaining tetrions and charge distributions in, um, in particles and how they're built, have now been done using nothing more than some printed pieces of paper, a pair of scissors and some sticky tape.
We've advanced science beyond a basic understanding to a complete understanding, and all that you do here in building these paper models applies throughout tetrionics. You will use these same models, these same planar mass energy geometries, and the same matter topologies to explain periodic elements in chemistry, to explain quantum electrodynamics, spectral lines, quantum jumping, to explain universal gravitation, how it really works throughout the others. And of course we correct a lot of mathematics because the geometry is a rigid inflexible geometry and you can only um, only uh, you can't allow um, what's the word I'm looking for supposition or extrapolation beyond the rigid geometries this geometry the equilateral geometry which has been overlooked really since Euclid now forms the basis of how we understand physics on all scales of energy Thanks for listening to this rather long discussion, but an important one all the same. I hope you've gained some information from it. If uh, you have any questions, by all means message me on Facebook or Google+, and I'll be happy to explain any other details or aspects of this particular introductory video.